Wrestling fans from around the corner, around the world. I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. It took him a second. Before, Always does. Before we get to this great full-length episode of Memories and Legends, check out some of our great friends you can help support the cause to keep more Memories and Legends coming your way. Infinity Key, a truly natural online language training experience. 25,000 minutes, that's what you'll need to invest. Invest 25,000 minutes with Infinity Key and we'll build you a portfolio of language experiences designed to accelerate your personal progress. The coach will help you strike the right balance between passive acquisition and active application of your target language. InvestKey's algorithms and coaches guide you along the clearest, quickest path forward on your journey to fluency. Visit www.infinitykey.rocks for more information and follow Infinity Key on Facebook at facebook.com backslash infinity key. Sacramento on Monday, December 17th. Monday Night Raw returns live with a massive main event after a shocking betrayal. Oh my God! Seth Rollins collide with Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship. Plus, Finn Balor battles Drew McIntyre one-on-one. -on -one. And don't miss Wanda Rousey and many more. It's WWE Raw live in Sacramento, Monday, December 17th. Tickets and ringsider packages are available. champion, the drama boy, the great one, and this, finally, The Rock has come back, is his story, journey alongside the millions, in this definitive guide to, the most electrifying man in sports and entertainment, see The Rock, Like you've never seen him before. And the Rock is cooking. The world of the Rock. Available now. Wrestling fans, check out the brand new lapel pin from our friends at Crimson Mask. Inspired by Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon, it's Bang 316. Only eight dollars each or two for twelve. If you think it makes a great holiday gift, give me a hell yeah. Get yours today at crimsonmask.bigcartel.com. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. superstars in that locker room would love to be doing what Rollins is doing right here. They're all keeping a close eye. Close blast through Corbin, through the table. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insiders. I'm Dan Marani, joined by the co-host with the most. David right here. Yes. Captain Dender himself. That's David right, let's go. Carter, That's right, swiping right all the time. Hey, there you go. Now, we're very happy that we have a very professional product tonight as we actually have a director with us. Yes. A yes. tiny little Dutch boy, I believe, he had to make his way to Lebanon Street before he came down to the studio on Main Street. I don't know if that's true or not. Well, we'll have, have to, to wait and see. Him. He's still coughing in there. Maybe in a couple of fur balls from whistling in the wheat field. Uh oh. You know what I mean? Uh, what do we got going on this week We're, from the world of WWE? Baby? We got the Raw review. Oh boy, there's well, a lot to review on that. Yes, that was that was a <laughs> tough night at the office it was. yet again. We had Seth Rollins kick off the show. He, you know, we talked a little bit about the TLC. I talked about how actually he actually said Raw has sucked the last couple weeks. You know, I mean, he mentioned that. Then calls mm. Corbin out and says it's his fault. Um, talks about him ruining Raw pretty much. Just he's ruining it. And then also about the TLC match that he's going to have tonight. That's what Baron Corbin says. He's going to have a TLC match tonight. You know? I think the idea of throwing it in people's face that the show sucks isn't a great idea. I know. I couldn't believe they went I there either. I don't think the majority of the fans that watch know what the TV ratings are right. by any stretch of the imagination. They may have a feeling of their own opinion that the show has sucked. But I would not reinforce that idea. No. Me either. Um, not at all. Is it a benefit to anybody? No. 
I mean, you're going to put the heat on Corbin for a giant production team putting together a few weeks of episodes Man. now that have not been well received. I, I didn't see the benefit of that. No. I, you know, I understand them trying to build up an issue to head towards the end of the show, but just the whole thought of Corbin even wrestling right now, where he's the quasi uh, general manager, is just mind blowing to me. I think it's benefited Baron, and that I think he's probably going to be more effective on the microphone when he goes back to full time in ring work. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I just I roll my eyes at him. All right, and the first match tonight was AOP and Drake Maverick versus Gable and Rude, and they came out with the robes on, the same outfits. I mean, you know, it was crazy. I thought it was actually a good match, and I was surprised they put the tag team titles on them. I really was. I was not surprised in the least by oh, the really? title change. You thought? Anytime okay. the ratings are down. They do they that? React. No, yeah. not, not every time, but, you know, now that it's been a few weeks in a row of them being brutalized, what's the quickest way to try and hot shot? TV ratings. Right. Some title changes, gimmick matches. Yep. Here you had not just a title change, you had a gimmick match because it was three on two right. where AOP had uh, Drake Maverick as part of their team as well. I just, I don't see any chemistry between Rude and Gable. Um, why they've done what they've done with Bobby Rude, I don't understand. Maybe, Maybe they, having the tag titles will bring the, them together. No, no, that's not going to No, you don't think so? You don't you think that, they're there? No. I think, what about them wearing robes together, though? I think Chad Gable looked like a little kid. I think he did look better, though, in the regular tights as opposed to the, um, the, single the old wrestling singlet. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that'll get a little positive going for Gable. I thought they were going to put that team together for the sake of breaking them up. Right. It just, with Raw, now was lacking as than far ever. as any, any period of wrestling I can remember as far as having weak tag teams. They just kind of went with it. Huh? I mean, Rude and, Bobby, uh, Rude and Gable are both very good. I just, I don't see anything... Any chemistry with the team at all? Huh? I AOP totally agree. losing to them, I, I don't. I I just don't like any of it. I don't like the entire angle. Uh, moving on, we had Natty. She came out and she had her little promo segment, some tears in there, and all that stuff. Ruby came out with a, a table behind a black curtain, and I mean, I knew right from the start what it was going to be. And you know, they're going very deep into this. I'm surprised Natty, you know, gave the okay with this whole thing. I mean, you know, just because, you know, how it was with their father passing away and they're just using it right off the cuff. But he was on the face of the table and Ruby said that's the table she's going to use to put her through and everything. I mean, you know, it was good. And by the way, I got to mention, Ruby Riot looked really, really good this past Monday night. She looked beautiful. Oh, I don't know yeah. what it was, but she looked beautiful. I loved her. KY Jelly, baby. Oh, yeah. Um... I don't think there was anything overly... And it was a great segment. Let me put my opinion on there before you go on yours. I thought it was a great segment. I didn't think there was anything overly distasteful about it. Um, and a lot can be said about some of the angles they've run that some might find distasteful in the past. You know, I can't believe they're wasting one of the gimmick matches on those two at the pay-per-view, but I've been one to complain that the Riot Squad isn't riotous. Now at least they've done something with the table. And this match can could they be a build surprise. on that? I have no idea. We'll see is it something I'm looking forward to seeing? Absolutely not. Right. I thought it was one of Natalia's better promos. Riot comes off as very bland on the microphone, whether that's the scripted material or she's just not that good of a promo, I'm not sure, but her part in it didn't work. I thought there was at least some reaction to the table for those that remember who Jim Neidhart was. Right. Uh, moving on, we had Drew McIntyre versus Dolph Ziggler, which... I don't know why they're doing these matches now when it could have been built to something else, but they just hot shot it again. Boom. Third. I mean, it was a good match, but you're going to get that with the Dolph Ziggler, and Drew has come so far ahead. It was a good match, but why do it now? Why not put some icing on it? Like, put something in there, a little some salt and pepper. Build something up first and then have the match. There is a just... segment in a row that was a repeat from the week before. Right. Why? Why would you go back to the well when the fans already said they don't like it and they don't want to see it? I don't know. I like Ziggler an awful lot. I think McIntyre has got a load of potential. I don't think they click as singles opponents. It wasn't a bad match. I don't think it was necessarily any good. It certainly wasn't one that I wanted to see again a week after the fact. Yeah. And I think it showed in their abysmal record low ratings. I mean, and Drew did have the Claymore kick that was awesome. Ziggler sold that so well. It was a I great draw click. Her. But it was awesome. Yeah. Um, then we had the match of the night that for you, which was Bailey versus. Oh. Alicia Fox, which I'll even admit, I thought was a cluster. There was nothing really good. Bailey won with the Bailey to Belly, but 
Um, I thought it was a cluster. It was just it wasn't on it wasn't on par like the usual women's matches. Some of them. This one was just uh. another rerun from the week before. Right. When those two, yep. I think, were against each other in, yeah. a, tag, in a tag exactly, team match. Yeah. I, you know, Bailey has been. What is the word I'm even looking for at this point? Her and Sasha are just such afterthoughts now. They've done nothing with them. I think if you were to look at who is the number two female babyface on Raw, you probably have to say Natalia. Huh. Um, I just nothing about that I enjoyed. Nothing about that I wanted to see. I liked how Apollo Cruz got involved. Um, he's someone that I've said before. I, I see so much more in him at the untelevised live events than I've ever seen on TV. I'm not quite sure why that is, but I continue to believe there's a lot of potential in Apollo. Um, trying to do something with him is better than doing nothing. What really got me going was the spot where Apollo picked up Sasha and hummed her on top of the two sings in Jinder Mahal. This girl that looks like she weighs about as much as our technical director, about 60 pounds, and the three of them toppled over like they were hit by a missile. Come on. Come <laughs> on. People aren't going to believe in that. I get and that's it. the problem with they it. have right now with people tuning in to free television shows. They don't like it. Well, moving on, we had Elias versus your boy, Leo Rush, which was a surprise getting a one, one shot at on Raw instead of 205 Live. It was good. And uh, we had Heath Slater as the referee. The one-man band is back in the ring, but as a ref this time. You know... Okay, they've done something with Heath Slater. Is it going to be any good? I don't know. The heel referee thing can get stale really Real quick, quick, really yeah. fast. And let me tell you, there's enough things on that show that are getting stale really, really quick. quick. I get it. Really fast. I like this segment. It had a little bit of reaction to it, which most of Elias's matches don't. After He gets the great reaction when he does the promo and engages the crowd to chant along with him and so on. The matches are largely forgettable. Here... You know, I would have liked to have seen maybe a little bit more buildup until the baby face finally gets his hand on the heel manager. But I thought Leo was pretty good. Leo's done a really good job at making himself unlikable. Uh, I know you weren't a fan of when he would come out and chant Lashley, Lashley. I liked it. I just didn't like the fact that they did it in competitive matches. I think if it was still during the day when they had squash matches and it was Lashley against Tom Stone or Lashley against Barry Horowitz, I probably would have liked it. Putting him in competitive matches with stars that are supposed to be somewhat of an equal to him, not so much, but I thought it was effective as Lashley does not come across as a heel to me. Uh, he doesn't cheat enough. I think he's just a phenomenal athlete, badass that the people want to like. And I think that's the problem with the portrayal of him as a heel. You can give him a hat, you can give him sunglasses, you can give him a vest, but he needs he more do than it. that. Yeah, he does. Is it going to be Leo to get him over the top? I don't know. I still think Bobby is certainly a top of the card main event guy. Uh, but Leo looked just was a phenomenal athlete in that match. Just his movements. Um, I, I applaud my, my good friend, Leo Rush, a man, again, that has been here in this very TV studio. Definitely. The uh, only athlete on the roster, I believe, that's uh, bigger than the little Dutch boy. Nice. Uh, moving on, we had a Nia promo and a Ronda promo. I don't even want to get into because I know what you're going to say of it, but it was... Um, it, it was, was atrocious. It, yeah, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't good. I don't... They've done it. Oh, up next, it's the big conference, face-to-face -face confrontation it wasn't good. between Nia's Ronda and Nia. Nia's still got a long every way to go TV. to be good on the mic. She's not good. Ronda's there, but Nia... No good. Uh, then we turned it yeah, in. I don't and even get a chance to share my opinion. You just on did. This. You did. What did I say? You just said the big confrontation of the cluster. I, did, I don't think I called it a cluster, did okay, I? I said you call? it's just repetitive. It's been on week after week after week. It sucks. There you the go. Heat that Naya That's why got, we don't want to hear it. The heat that Naya got initially after the incident where she potatoed Becky Lynch, it wasn't, ooh, she's a heel heat. It was, ooh, we don't want to ever see you again. You heat. love Naya. And now that, ooh, has gone away, and now when she's out there, whether it be wrestling or cutting promos, is just crickets. It's well, at the end of the day, you silence. still love Nia Jack, yeah, so it's yeah. all right. Uh, and then we rolled into a match, which was Tamina versus Ember, which was a decent match. Oh, I mean, it was, great. it was a decent match. It wasn't bad. I'll I'm not going to shit on it. Well, DVR you know what? On the spot. You see, that's the thing is you don't appreciate women wrestling, and it was a good match for what it was. The deep, well, it was a good match. Tamina looked good in her Sons of Anarchy gear, and Ember came away with that. Very impressive finisher that she has. Yeah, it is. It, Ember has a lot of talent. 
And Tamina's doing pretty good to come back. She, you know, she's no. getting the ring rust off. She's looking good. It's like when Haku You know what? And then we moved the on to the TLC match, it's the like main event of Monday Night back. Raw. Yeah. It was great. It was Seth Rollins versus Corbin. Some great spots. They got everything involved. I thought it was a fantastic match. You know, it was a pay-per-view worthy match. It was good. It was very watchable. I liked it a lot. You had two talents, I think, in there that I enjoy watching. The problem, like I mentioned it before, is it's hot shots. Oh, the chair shots. There was Those were no hard chair shots. reason to put that on free TV the week before the Hey, you know show. what? They want to do something. And you know what? That probably maybe get somebody talking. Well, yeah, that's the thing. So, well, doing a title change, get people talking, sure. Well, having a gimmick match, get people talking, sure. The crowd was hot. But at the it. end of the day, they're going to have to keep overdoing it. Right. The crowd was hot into it. And then the fans aren't into the gimmick matches and the title changes. That Seth Rollins splash through the table, which was awesome. That frog push was was great. great. Um, You had, uh, what's his name, Heath Slater get involved in because he was the referee again. He got involved, but he didn't end up costing Seth the match, which was good. Seth ended up winning. Um, I don't know. I'm telling you, Baron Corbin, I hope he he doesn't end up being the general manager or whatever he is, the commissioner. He, what do you call it? He's good. He, can, he cuts pretty good promos. He's a good worker in the ring. I think they could do something with him. I have been a big advocate for Baron Corbin. I think at one point maybe the hairline was an issue, but yep. they took care of that. Shaved it right off. Shaved it right off. Right now, I think he's probably the most overexposed guy in WWE, along with Nia Jax. The fans resent it. I think he needs to lose perhaps the, the I don't know if comedy is the right word, but the the... Lighter moments. I think he should be a more serious and dark superstar in his presentation. And I still think he's someone that's capable of being a main eventer for them. I know he's not exactly a young, young guy, but he's young enough that they could get a lot of value out of him. Absolutely. Um, that's it for Raw. Moving on to SmackDown. Well, before we go, I mean, they're playing the music right now. It's the holiday season. December 14th, this Friday night, baby. It kicks off. Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, and myself. 12 days of Christmas. As we count down to the big night, December the 25th, and we get ready for the 7th annual Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. Check it out. Detroit on Friday, December 28th. Feel the thrill of a special Friday night edition of Monday Night Raw with a double main event as Seth Rollins collide with Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship. And Braun Strowman takes on Baron Corbin in a one-on-one battle. Plus, don't miss Ronda Rousey, Bobby Lashley, and Finn Balor live. It's WWE Raw in Detroit on Friday, December 28th. Tickets and rates out of packages are available. Wrestling fans, I tell you, it's that time of year again. It's getting cold out, and you'll want the goodies. Our good friends at Honeydew Donuts. 888, 888 Main Street in Melrose, Tony. They got the cocoa. They got the coffee. They got the donuts. They got the muffins. Oh, they got all the goodies. You love them. Oh, my goodness. And And they got the best, too. Hey, they got the best donuts all nice and hot. And nothing better than a fresh hot donut early in the morning with a cup of coffee on your way to work. Get your day going real good. I like them donuts, man. Well, our friends at Honeydew, they were great to us for the holiday headlock story drive this year. And they got a special going on through Christmas Day, Tony. Oh, really? $25 gift card, you get a $5 bonus. $50 $50 wow. gift card, you get a $10 bonus. That's fantastic. $75 gift card, you get $15. Bucks. Wow. And then if you hit the 100 mark, you get 20 back. It's unbelievable. You Again, can't beat that. Christmas Day. Great yep. stocking stuff. I know yep. you're always looking to give stocking stuffers. Yep, yep. Well, you see, that's a good thing about, about Honeydew Donut. They want to give back. You know, they want to thank the, 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 uh, the people for supporting them over the years. Right. And they feel that they want to give a little bonus to it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody should want to give, do a little giving this year. Honeydew is doing a, they have given for many years. And then once again, they right on the mark giving again. Well, Tony, you're a WWE Hall of Famer. You're a bodybuilding Hall of Famer. Will Honeydew belong in the Donut Hall of Fame? I would love to be in the Honeydew Hall of Fame. Yes, I would. The Honeydew Hall of Fame. Honeydew Donuts, again, we thank you for your support. We hope to join us again in the future. Thank you. See the moment. Lead Generation X invades WCW. You'll always remember. Like never before. Occupy Raw has taken over. With Raw, the first 25 years, packed with rare photos, profiles of your favorite superstars, and so much more. From the very first Raw to the 25th anniversary, it's the ultimate guide to WWE's flagship show. 
Raw, the first 25 years. Available now. The most dominant superstar in recent memory. Pittsburgh on Saturday, December 29th. With this a special Saturday night edition of WWE SmackDown Live with an epic main event as AJ Styles, Daniel Bryan, The Miz, and Samoa Joe collide at a fatal four-way match for the WWE Championship. Plus, free agent John Cena and Rey Mysterio battle Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura in a tag team match. It's WWE SmackDown Live on Saturday, December 29th. Tickets and ringsider packages are available. To her TLC opponents. Oscar's destroying Flair and Lynch. Oscar's going to break that kendo stick. Oscar's going to break her opponents. Wrestling fans, welcome back. We discussed Monday Night Raw this past week from the home of Dr. David Reese, San Diego, California. Ah, now what we're a going very to the forgettable show it was. WWE SmackDown in Sin City, Las Vegas, baby. My city. And we kicked it off big with Daniel Bryan came to the ring. He had good heat. He had some booze, which oh, I'm yeah. saying it's oh, working, yeah. baby. I was right on that. I told you the crowd would start hating him, and they are. They're booing him like crazy. You suck. I loved it. And I was actually going to film it with my camera so I could play it to the camera so you could actually hear it. Because according to you, it wouldn't work, but it's working. No, it's working it's very well. Work. It is it working. Is a flop. It is working. It sucks. No, nope. because you um, want it to because the, you see it in your face, but you won't admit it the is working. Pussy, they are booing him. The pussy They're millennial booing him. character is not They're gonna booing be him. They're saying he sucks. That's what company. Hills do, and that's what Hills get. Well, He's okay. getting booed. How about this? You are at a point now where you have record Daniel low Bryan ratings. Daniel Bryan sucked chant. There was a Daniel Bryan sucked chant. Ratings. So and what? That's that it wasn't going to change tickets. whether he's a face or not. So it doesn't matter. You can't go by that. The ratings are dropping because they're dropping. If he, if he turned, if he was still a face, they wouldn't be going up anyway. So don't use the rating yeah, stuff you know with what? me. That point I'll agree with to some degree. Daniel Bryan got a sucks chant this week. The, the crowd people started that are going to go and pay their money to go. Right, but are you said it wouldn't it. work. They're working. I'm it's talking working. about all the more and more empty seats. And the more and more or less people you have watching on television. I told you, the rating thing's not going to work with this like conversation it. because if he was a face, the more or less people would still be going and nobody would well, watch it. Well, they're going to tune out at you a know, fast so we're gonna see it. But anyways, which Daniel was cool Bryan was we got to see Mustafa Ali versus him. Merchandise. Oh. Daniel Bryan is someone that elicited a positive response from oh, the yeah. fans. Taking and the ratings went through the roof when he was a, a face. That's that, right. Well, uh, has his creative been any good since he oh, came back? Oh, it's been fantastic since he's been to hell. It's awesome. No, no, no. Since he came back at WrestleMania. No. I thought even the angle when he came back at WrestleMania was last. Right, Oscar. but that's why they changed it to him. It's working. The crowd, well, he's getting a they reaction. They could have used him as the Daniel Bryan the fans wanted to see. No, it wasn't drawn. It wasn't no, working. Well, him coming out in the 70-year-old the women's sweater is not going to uh, be... Not to you, but the crowd, he's okay. getting a reaction. A lot of wrestlers don't get a reaction. He's getting okay. that reaction. He actually got a Daniel Bryan sucks chant. So okay. he's getting a reaction. Well, the character does And suck. you know what? That's Mustafa why. Ali versus him was a great match, and it was cool seeing Mustafa Ali come to the main roster for a match from 205 Live. I thought it was a great match. Um, you know, DB1 with a uh, new move, too. Did you see it? Hit the yep. hill hook. I thought that was kind of cool. It's more, you know, more hillish doing it like that. I thought it was good. And he, he wrestled like a hill. He gave him a little, you know, grab to the mouth, things like that, that a hill would do. He's working it. He's working it. It's, it's, it's going to simmer and boil. It's not going to just be an explosion like I know you want it to be. It's going to be a simmer, a slow burn to make an explosion as a hill. It's not going to be this top thing. It's going to take a while for crowds to really believe it. He was a face for so long, but you don't want to give it a shot because you just want to be right. It's bad Halloween wrestling. No, it's not. I don't want to be right. I just want to see no, the No, you want to be right because you poo-pooed on it before it even happened. Right when it happened, you poo-pooed on it and said it wasn't going to work. Because it was a bad idea. No, to you. I thought Austin, when he no. turned heel, was a bad idea. That was different. No one's been as hot as him. No, Daniel Bryan wasn't even close to being as hot as him. But let me explain the difference. Austin, at that point, had had his big run, and he was worried about losing popularity. Brian was still fresh enough coming back from that long absence where they could have got more mileage care. out of him. He at he least should have ran care. through all of the top heels in singles feuds before they did it. No one cared. Well, that's why this is different. Wait till you see you know, how the old but then we moved over, angle And then goes. we moved as over. As far as Mustafa Ali goes, that was a good match. You could say it was, it was kind of fun to see someone from it, 205 it Live on the show. It is the problem with that that I worry about. WWE is going to get too comfortable with being able to pluck these guys from 205 Live, and they're going to use them as jobbers, as enhancement talent. Then a show that has no value right now, for the most part, is even going to have less value. I don't think that would be a good thing. If you recall what happened to the cruiserweights in the Attitude Era, might be a god. They... We'll see what happens. You know. Um, then we had what I thought was very useless was the rap battle. 
Oh. Uh, the Usos versus the Bar. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think the Bar was yeah, funny. Yeah, all that talent in one ring. Just, and that's yeah. the best they could do. Oh. Like I wrote, I put it. It was. It is what it was. And then uh, you know, I don't know. Everyone I brawled the Usos, at the end. Usos were pretty good. With yeah, it. they and were kind of different. What about Ice Ice Shamey? Did you like that? No, I didn't Ice, like Ice Ice Shamey. I could see you getting up and dance to it. I'd be probably worried. And then after that, we had the Miz came out for another promo thing. He called out Shane. <laughs> Shane came out, and we ended up having an impromptu match versus Miz and Shane versus the Vegas Boys. What did you think of that match? Well, I tell you, we saw a little Royce Grace. Oh, we seen a little Stone Shane, Cold yeah. Shane McMahon, baby. I thought of you. A couple of boots to the midsection. I was we ready won for the, the stunner, triangle. But instead, he won with the triangle. We saw our MMA, Shane. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's probably being trained by Ken Shamrock <laughs> leading into I, I, I think Shane McMahon's very talented. I just don't understand why they think the fans are, have ever, in his now almost 20 years as a, a television character, right. think the fans are going to believe that he is some kind of a badass. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's just, it's not believable to me. Yeah. Again, he's talented. I just don't see him as on par as a top badass main event baby face. I don't get it either. Or a main event heel. But we'll see what happens. Uh, and then we had Randy Orton come out for a promo again, another promo. He talked, you know, about how he, he's going to make uh, Rey Mysterio pay for everything. He's going to destroy him at uh, TLC. Then he got attacked from behind from Rey Mysterio on those vicious chair shots. It was a good way to build up the match TLC. Quick little promo, you know. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. I thought it was very effective, and they didn't overdo it. It yeah. wasn't a 20-minute promo. It wasn't 2,500 chair shots. Orton it was just came a few, out, did know. his thing. Mysterio got in, snuck in behind from the big bad heel, got his shots in, got a little bit of revenge, and it left you wanting to see more. Right. That's a very effective segment with both guys. Yep. Um, we had, then we had a backstage promo with Becky Lynch, yeah, which was very good. She's yeah. cutting some of the best That's promos great. in wrestling right now. Um, and she also announced that she would be ringside for the match between Asuka and Charlotte later on in the night. It was a good promo. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, it was phenomenal. Okay, so we'll just move on then. Next week. Then we had Joe versus Nakamura. I mean, Joe and Nakamura versus Hardy and um, Rusev. Rusev. I thought it was a good match. I mean, it's different seeing what do you call it, Rusev and Harvey, Hardy now together. All of a sudden, Rusev's a face, you know. Whatever, it works for me. Hey, a heel that never turned. But, but you know, first, he's just a but baby first face before now. the match started, I want to ask you, what did you think about the dance break of our truth and Carmella coming out? Can you get insulting, up and do the? Can you get up and do the dance right now? Insulting to the majority of the audience. We should if have a seven-second dance break. That was being. Oh yeah. Let's have one We've right now. We've had enough of those here at the hey, studio. Hey, director, the hit the dance music. Let's go. All right, we're All rocking. Right, we're rocking. That. that was good. But um, I lost my train of thought. If they were doing a show that was tailor-made just for little kids, I think it would be fun. I think it's a turn-off. The way it's presented now. Is Hardy not on the pay-per-view with TLC against Samoa Joe? I don't know. They didn't I'm kind of interested, it. yeah. I, they I, announced I'm, it. I don't know. They, and they've given that a, a fair amount of build-up. Yeah. Um, as far as the tag team match itself goes, it, it was fine. Uh, Rusev, I, I, I liked him better as a heel. I thought he was a lot more effective. I know the fans have fun chanting Rusev Day, and that's cool and all, but you know there was money in him as a heel. Right. I can't believe Rusev actually got the clean pin over uh, Nakamura, too. I thought there would be some kind of, you know. That's the perfect way to have the yep. champion do the job. Yeah, Don't totally. do the fucking non, oh, I swore again, the non-title matches. I hate that because they do it too often, and they most of the time don't even announce that it's a non-title match. Right. Having the heel champion get pinned in a tag team match is the great traditional way to get it done. Exactly. It shows the champion can lose and will lose to this challenger. And I think, are they... They're involved in the pay-per-view. Is it the pre-show on Sunday? Yeah. Okay. So we'll see what that happens. Um, One question before we continue, though. Was I not on the ball about what was going to happen with Aiden English? Oh, yeah, I know. Is he still alive? Yeah, I don't know. Main event status, probably. That was a, a grouping that was working. It was a grouping that was over. They were quick to pull that trigger because they don't know how to book tag teams and tandems. Everybody has to turn on each other. And now you have a guy that the fans were really reacting to in Aiden English, and he's in no man's land. That's unfortunate. I wish I was wrong. Oh, I know what you mean. Um, and then we had a Miz and Shane promo again backstage. Okay. And, uh, you know, basically Miz just talked about, you know, I put you through that because I knew you could do it because you're two-thirds the best in the world and all that. And then he puts his hand out to shake it, and Shane just 
Walks thought off. he was going to hit the stunner. Yeah, but he did. He looked good. He looked jacked up. Yeah, he had the he's in great shape. Yeah, especially, he looked good. You know, you're talking about a guy that's a lot closer to, to 50 than 40. And he looked great. I, I, is this something that they can And he use? had the black shirt on. All yep, he'd say was yep. off Shane 316, Shane 316 on. But can they carry this all the way through WrestleMania? I don't know. I, sh- I hope not. <laughs> We'll see what happens. You know what? Maybe they'll do elimination. Now, is Shane McMahon in the Royal Shane Rumble this year, you think? That. He'll win the Rumble. No, is Shane McMahon in the Rumble, you think? You think they'll waste a number on him so he can do his shame, Stone Cold Shane McMahon? I would say no. Into his vintage baseball jersey that he wears. He loves wearing his, uh, his baseball jersey and his swishy pants yeah. to make him look not like a professional wrestler, but I... Uh... Like I said, maybe they could screw him out of the Rumble and he could win Elimination Chamber or something. Oh, my God. We could do God. the, uh, the coast let's to not, coast off the top Let's not even the joke pods. about this. <laughs> All right, moving on to the main event of SmackDown, which was a good rematch of WrestleMania, what, 34? Yep. Uh, Asuka yep. versus Charlotte, which was a good match. They worked great together. Um, Wasn't anywhere near WrestleMania. But no, no, it was a good match. It was match. a good match. Yep. Um, the kendo stick got involved again. Man, those kendo sticks, I don't understand, but WWE loves in. having them. Used the kendo sticks in all three of them, and Oscar ended up on top with the you know Whoa, beating up both of them. Ended all right, well now you get you know what I'm saying on the top like she was <laughs> the last one standing after beating both Becky and Oscar, uh, Charlotte with Don't the kendo stick. Don't tell the professor about that; he might come back. Then I'd love to hear about Oscar. But what did you think? Top. You know, it was an effective way to build that TLC match on Sunday. It's a rare women's match that I'm really looking forward to seeing. I think it'll be very good. Those three are by far the best three women in WWE. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't have minded seeing it booked in a way where they wound up having a, a, a non-stipulation triple threat match first and then have some kind of an angle coming out of it where the, the TLC was the rematch, but that's, that's just being picky. Right. Um, I, just, I wish there was more, in all cases, storytelling like that that had more A, B, C, D, and so on. But no, as far as the match goes, they did a good job building it up. Uh, Lynch is hot right now. Uh, Charlotte has looked better. For some reason, she doesn't like to take the steps. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. She kind of like stopped and turned. Yeah. When I she always goes loved to how yeah. Red Hot would take a turn buckle, and I think everybody should aim for that. As far as Asuka goes, there is someone that was hot coming into the company. It's just the more that she did, well, the less this, impact and sizzle that it had on her. Hopefully, maybe this Sunday. We'll yeah. Build hopefully her again. this Sunday will revitalize her. I wouldn't take the title off of Lynch. No. But if you wanted to take the title off of Lynch, here you have. A triple threat match with stipulations where she wouldn't even need to get, get pinned. pinned. Yeah. Could you do a screw job fuck finish? Yeah. Absolutely. Would it be good? No. no. Would it surprise people and get them talking for a couple of days before they realize they hate it? Sure. Would the TV ratings go down that Tuesday? Maybe not, but the next week, probably. And that's it for SmackDown. No. What about Memories and Legends with the Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas? This Sunday before the pay per view, Tony shoots on a man that loved to get naked more than you do with your Tinder dates. Oh, really? Nature Boy, Boy Ric Flair. Flair. The baby's arm. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and the Briscoe Brothers. Oh. On top of that, 12 days of Christmas with Tony and I. I don't know if you've seen the beautiful outfits that Tony and I wore <laughs> these 12 days of no, Christmas. No, I haven't. Or Tony's antlers. Oh. But you're in for a treat. 12 days of Christmas with Tony and I. Original content every day from the 14th to the 25th. We're trying to do something creative to get you guys engaged to join the 7th Annual Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive. Head on over to the bostonwrestling.com super site. We have the annual Christmas special that puts Frosty and Rudolph to shame. It features Bruce Pritchard, Mick Foley, Jim Ross, NXT's Warbeard Hanson, Demolition Axe, Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, and so many more. We have the giant mega raffle jackpot. Dozens of prizes, probably worth at this point over $1,000. One fan with one raffle ticket is going to win it all. You have to enter to win, though. And on top of that, if you're ready to give a gift on Christmas or any of these holidays in December, we have the $20 merchandise bundle, mystery WWE t-shirt, five autographed photos, something to wrestle with, drink koozie, autographed Christmas card, and so much more. The Patreon channel is still soft, but it's live. We're doing much more on eBay. You can bring home some of these bad boys at discounted prices. we got a lot going on. We need your support to make more and more of these tapings happen. Did I forget to plug anything? I don't think so. I think you no. hit everything. I'm about as dry right now in the mouth as the, uh, 
as our technical director's friend on Lebanon Street is the rest of it. All right. We'll leave it at that. For Dave Cutter, I'm Dan Marotti. Until we speak again, don't forget, every day from the 14th to the 25th, it's WWE Hall of Famer Tony Atlas's 12 Days of Christmas. Good night. It's that time of year again, and there's two great ways to help. First, we have our annual Holiday Headlocks Mega Raffle, where one lucky fan is going to win the entire jackpot of prizes. You'll get the NXT TakeOver Chicago pay-per-view chair, a variety of NXT authentic autographed posters, a Tony Atlas signed artwork print, a personal phone call from the WWE Hall of Famer himself, and dozens of more prizes including books, DVDs, autographed photos, trading cards, shakers, cups, and more. You can enter the raffle for as little as $5 and it's open to fans anywhere in the world. The winning number will be selected after SmackDown on Christmas night. You can pick up your jackpot of prizes at MWF Studios or arrange for shipment. We also have our $20 merchandise bundle available. It's a great cost-effective holiday gift. For only $20, not only do you help our Holiday Headlocks toy drive, but receive a mystery WWE t-shirt in your choice of sizes, five autograph photos, a something to wrestle with drink koozie thanks to our friend Bruce Pritchard, and an autographed Christmas card. Money raised from our endeavors goes to quote-unquote upgrade Santa Claus's GPS so we can find every kid on his list. We don't want any little guy or girl accidentally missed because of a technical error, so please do what you can to help. Whether you're just a fan of Christmas or enjoyed Paul Bearer's work with The Undertaker in WWE, this is a chance for the professional wrestling community to come together for the holidays. Buffalo on Sunday, December 30th. Feel the thrill as WWE returns live with a massive main event after a shocking betrayal. Oh my God! Seth Rollins collides with Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship in a steel cage match. Plus, Finn Balor, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre collide in a triple threat match. It's the WWE Live Holiday Tour in Buffalo, Sunday, December 30th. Tickets and VIP packages are available. They're ready. Ready to take their rightful place amongst the literary greats. Who, 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 who? Who, you ask? The New Day! That's who. It's the Book of Booty. Shake it, love it, never be it. It's the feel-good story of the rise of the new day. Loaded with games, trivia, coloring pages, and so much more. The Book of Booty. Shake it, love it, never be it. Available now, online, or wherever books are sold. Tampa, on Sunday, December 30th. WWE SmackDown Live returns as the legendary John Cena stars on the most must-see WWE talk show in history, Miz TV, and locked inside a steel cage, AJ Styles battles Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship, plus Randy Orton, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte Flair. It's the WWE Live Holiday Tour on Sunday, December 30th. Tickets are available.